911. How may I assist you? Ma'am, ma'am, hold on, hold on, please. I'm going to have to ask you to please stop screaming. Ma'am, ma'am, it would be best for you to calm down. Yes, ma'am, this is the 911 service center at Magicville. Now, please, ma'am, it's very important. Try to calm down. All right, all right. That's better. Now, please explain to me what seems to be the problem. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, I see, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Uh, ma'am, let me ask you a question. Was your husband wearing anything orange when the spell was cast on him? Oh, he was not. I see. Ma'am, why wasn't your husband wearing any orange article of clothing? Mm-hmm. see. So you and your husband only recently moved to Magicville. Less than a month. Um, Ma'am, when you moved here with your husband, did the two of you receive your pamphlet package? from the Magicville Chamber of Commerce? Mm hmm Oh, you did. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, you didn't believe. Well, yes, ma'am. That seems to happen a lot with people who move here. It is very important that at all times, at least a somewhat significant percentage of your body is covered in orange in order to prevent any of the spells from working. Well, yes, ma'am. Here in Magicville, magic is real. Anyone willing to study and train in its use can use magic. Well, you see, ma'am, the master wizards who created Magicville long ago decided to put in a safety system, as it were. Basically, if a person is wearing anything orange on a somewhat significant amount of their body, none of the spells work. That's right, ma'am. I mean, haven't you noticed that most people walk around with orange baseball caps? Most of the women walk around with bright orange hats. In the winter time, most people walk around with orange coats. Even in the summer time, most of the young men walk around with bright orange t-shirts. And of course, um, Magicville has a booming industry when it comes to bright orange comforters, blankets, that sort of thing, ma'am. Well, for when you're sleeping so no one can cast a spell. Now, uh, please explain to me exactly what type of spell was cast on your husband. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Neighbor got upset with him. I see. Well, no, ma'am, no, I'm, 
I'm not here to judge, simply to ascertain the best way to assist you and your husband. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see, your husband was turned into a handgun. Yes, yes. Ma'am, ma'am, please calm down. There is no need to worry. Your husband was transformed into an inanimate object. That's right, ma'am. Oh, you managed to place your husband onto the coffee table with the barrel pointed away from you. Well, ma'am, even if the barrel was pointed towards you, it wouldn't matter. After all, your husband is currently an inanimate object. I mean, even in Magicville, there are certain rules. For example, your husband is not going to be able to float off the table and shoot you. Uh, not that he would want to. Uh, I'm assuming the two of you have a loving relationship. Yes, yes. Well, no, uh, it doesn't work that way, ma'am. Yes, inanimate objects remain inanimate objects while they are inanimate objects. Now, thankfully, one of the rules is if any person is transformed into a weapon or animal, the spell wears off, usually after 24 hours. Well, ma'am, once again, there's really no need for you to panic. Do you and your husband have children? Okay, okay, that's good. My advice for the next 24 hours, do not invite anyone into your home, and your husband will transform back into a human being, and everything will be fine. Well, no, ma'am. Once again, a gun is simply an inanimate object. It has no will, no desire of its own. You placed your husband as a gun onto the coffee table. Your husband, as a inanimate object is not going to do anything. He's not going to suddenly go off. You have nothing to worry about. That's right. A gun is just an inanimate object. It has no will of its own. Can't do anything on its own. My advice is to just leave your husband the gun alone and after 24 hours, he'll turn back. And ma'am, as soon as he turns back, I would strongly advise that the two of you go out and purchase some orange articles of clothing in order to make sure that this never happens again. Oh, your neighbor? Well, I'm going to reroute this call to the Magic Investigation Bureau, and they're going to follow up on this. But generally speaking, ma'am, unless someone casts a particularly violent spell, um... A first offense will often consist of a fine. Well, ma'am, you're going to have to take that up with the Bureau. Yes. Uh, thank you for calling the Magicville 911 Center. You have a good day, ma'am. Boop. Uh, I tell you, Steve, some of these newbies, they just don't get it. I know for a fact that a lot of them don't even read the pamphlet. I mean, it's so ridiculous, Steve. Yeah. 
so ridiculous indeed. Oh. oh, hold on. I've got another call coming in. Hold on. Boop. Magicville 911 Center, how may I assist you? Uh, sir, sir, I'm going to have to ask you to please stop screaming. Now explain to me what's going on. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, so you've locked yourself in your basement. And why did you do that? Mm-hmm. 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 Well, sir, did your wife give you consent to cast a spell on her? She did not. Well, that explains it. Honestly, sir, you cannot simply transform your wife into a mystical creature and expect her to be happy. If there is consent involved, the magic works the way it should. If there isn't, well, then there are complications. So you did not get your wife's consent to transform her into a very beautiful, very aroused vampire. Yes. Um, Oh, yes, sir. Her, I'm sorry, sir. Her fangs and her increased strength are real. Well, sir, that's the thing. You made them real when you cast that spell on her without her consent. Yes. Well, barricading... The basement door was a good idea. Well, sir, of course your wife is bloodthirsty. She's a vampire. You turned her into one without consent. Now, sir, do you have any crucifixes in the house or in the basement? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. You're Jewish. Yes. Well, sir, I'm not insulting your religion at all. Please understand that crucifixes work. A star of David isn't going to work. It's not about um, religious issues. It's just about what works on vampires and what doesn't. Well, sir, that's how the magic works. Now, I'm sorry if you can't understand that. Do you have anything silver? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Well, yes, sir. Silver does work on both vampires and werewolves. Do you have anything silver? Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. I'm going to need you to take that silver coin out of its protective case, hold it out in front of you, and I'm going to get some help to your location. Hold on, please. Boop. Uh, yes, this is the Magicville 911 Center. Um, I have an idiot who transformed his wife into a vampire without her consent, I'm going to need you to send a unit with some silver and crucifixes to 9736 Wilshire Boulevard. Yes, in the southwest region of Magicville. Yes, thank you. Thank you again. Boop. Yes, hello, sir. Yes, help is on the way. Yes, help is on the way. Please. 
try to remain calm. Help is on the way. Well, they're going to basically sedate your wife. Yes. And then a counter spell will be cast. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sure she's going to be furious with you. Please, the next time you want to live out any of your adult fantasies, be sure to get consent from your partner. Yes, consent is a beautiful thing, sir. All right. Oh, she's starting to bust through the door. Try to remain calm, sir. Yes. Try to remain calm and keep that silver coin in front of you. Yes. Have a good day. Boop. Ah, uh, Steve, I tell you, I'm so sick and tired of dealing with these idiots half the time. Like they don't understand the rules of Magicville. I mean, it's simple. Just buy an orange blanket, sleep under there, um, wear orange gloves or an orange hat or an orange t-shirt or an orange jacket. Hell, maybe orange cargo shorts. And that's going to be enough, but people don't listen. Ugh. And this last call. Ugh. Anyway, Steve, I'm going to take a break. Do me a favor, take over for me. Thanks. I owe you one, buddy.